All right, so for this uh, little idea, we are going to do something again different. Um, I was playing on the piano, the keyboard, and I was coming up with some chords. It's one of my favorite ways to come up with uh, some music ideas. make mistakes and but I was noodling and doodling around coming up with some chords so I came up with chords like now that chord I wasn't sure about the third chord there So I had some good chords, but they weren't really fitting in perfectly together, and I wasn't, um, I just, I wanted to polish it a lot more. So, so I took these chords that I was working with, and I uh, recorded them on a track into uh, Cubase, and then uh, dragged that MIDI into the Detect here into uh, Scalar. And um, what I came up with is um, eight chords well first I came in with seven chords there was a missing chord I think it was the E minor and the third chord was uh, not fitting in well just like on the piano here the transition from that wasn't the greatest so I knew I had to work on that transition and then there was a missing chord I think it was like I just said the E minor and there were other issues of it just fitting together like a nice progression. So what I did was um, immediately I went to, um, I brought them in and I started to edit the chords. So I went to the third chord here and uh, started to mess with uh, different variations, inversions, and even the velocity on each note. So I ended up changing the middle velocity quite a bit, lowering that which ended up making it sounding uh, like a nicer transition. So that third note, um, the, the higher note rang out more, which to my ears made the transition better. So I thought, okay, that's great. And then um, I went over and I got to the D minor and maybe I think I made a few other minor adjustments. And um, but the interesting part here again is that um, changing the velocity of one note, I'm finding that it is a really great way when you have a chord progression that's starting to work, but there's just something you can't put your finger on. You, you've changed the notes, but there's still something a little bit off and uh, it's highly recommended to go into velocity and start to change the, the velocity, the strength of each note to see how that will help it blend in with the next chord. I find that just like you know a, a real piano player will do that, um, this ability in Scalar to do that is really priceless. That is a, uh, I'm finding that to be a really strong way to polish your chord transitions. Um, you know, even after you've decided what your transition is going to be, the chord, it's just the ability to polish it and really make it fit nicely is uh, really powerful there. So, uh, but then it came down to the missing chord here. And then, uh, so what I did was I went to uh, modulation. And since I had all the chords down here, and I'll clear this from the other day, but so I had all the chords down here, but this one was missing. It was just like a rest there. And um, so what I did was I, I said, okay, so I want to go from the C major to the D minor. And then what would fill in that chord there? What would be a good chord? And um, that's where I knew Scalar was going to come in and really help me. So I brought in the D minor and it started to bring in different ideas for ways to go from there and so after doing that for a while and I forget which ones then I tried some other ideas brought those in brought those in uh, more ideas to 
and I finally decided on the E minor. So I took the E minor and then again edited that and uh, came up with what we have here. And then uh, it was just a matter of uh, polishing the last note. And I think I added a note in this one too. Let's see, or is it the last one? Uh, the last one. I added, actually added a note and adjusted the uh, velocities just to make them fit a little nicer. 46. Brought that one down. And so when it was all said and done, I really was happy with the flow of my uh, progression. I was able to add the missing chord that I couldn't find on the keyboard. And, and here again is the strength of Scalar. You can have a musical idea, but you're going to hit that place where you just don't want, know what the next chord's going to be, or you don't know why a chord isn't fitting in quite right, even though you know it's the right type of chord. Um, you know, that's where Scalar comes in and says, well, you know, maybe just try the velocity, turn the velocity of this uh, note down, or, you know, add a, um, a lower bass note or a higher note or invert it or um, any, you know, number of things you can do. So then I ended up with, um, if I turn this off now, then I recorded that into the DAW. So I simply, what I did was I uh, selected all of these. And I said, okay, I want to bring him into the DAW at two beats length and dragged him in and um, set up the chord track as we have done in other videos and ended up with these chords. So there, that was my story for my little chord progression where, you know, it, it went, it progressed and then it took a dark turn but ended up on a nice kind of resolution. So, okay, but then um, since we have Scalar and I had all my chords in there, um, immediately once you've got your bass chords, you can start to really play with it then and that's when you can turn on all the different performances. And that's what I did. I tried all kinds of different performances and uh, tried some harps and uh, phrases and different, even tried a melody. And so what I came up with is the following um, just ideas. And I'll, I'll play them through and then I'll show you how you can take that, those uh, initial ideas that are based on your chord progression, that custom chord progression that you just created because you want to drag them from your custom chord progression down here. That's where you, you change your performances up here, but you always drag it from down here where your actual chords are. And um, so, you know, you can come up with um, really customizing. So in this next one, I customize these two bars completely here by changing them around and changing the timing. So we'll come back to that after we listen to this. So that was that first idea, and I forget what uh, performance it was. It really doesn't matter because you can go through them all, and there's so many great performances in here. And I didn't even look around long. It's just a matter of starting to get the flow of ideas coming in. And um, so what I did here, so I guess I just explained what I did with this. So you can see here at the beginning, all these notes were the standard from the performance. They, I, I just dragged them in and that's what came in. So that was the beginning kind of rhythm. And then I changed up the rhythm of all the bass notes here. So I cut them up into quarters. So this is in 4-4 four, four time today. So if we look at our uh, time signature, it's at 4-4. Four, four. And um, so I chopped these all into quarter notes. So 
uh, the rhythm changed from here to all quarter notes so it became a faster rhythm to change it like a bridge or a different section of your song for these uh, bars and then I took the the standard pattern up here and because I have the chord track um, set up to help me with colors and I have the chord track set up as uh, a minor here um, I was able to just quickly um, drag up some of these notes and change them around for a different pattern to help with the bridge changing over to a different section so that worked out really nice uh, the rhythm changed and the um, the the uh, flow of the higher notes all changed so I was able to really change these around to anything that made musical sense and after uh, experimenting a few times I just came up with this different uh, pattern and then to change it a little further on the next bar I uh, since we had fast pattern and then we had even faster rhythm then it was you know slowed down right and I changed this pattern around and took away the rhythm but just left one little bit of beat here and dragged out the notes to last longer. So if we zoom back a little bit and listen to it again, you can see how uh, starting with the idea and just you know customizing it quickly with the chord track, you're able to take the uh, scalar idea and customize it any way you want. hear the rhythm of the bass change up here. So that was just one quick idea to go with, with that interesting phrase or whatever it was that I dragged out from Scalar. And then here's just another one. I'll go through a bunch of them just, you know, just to show some ideas that. And these are all based on my custom chord progression. Now, a lot of these ideas, you're going to want to, you know, really customize a, a lot of this. These are just kind of beginning building blocks. You may say that, okay, all this rhythm in this section here, um, you know, it's, it's great for fast rhythm parts, but you don't want it to always be fast rhythm. So you would, you know, you might say, okay, and on these bars starting here, you're going to slow it way down so you're going to drag out your notes or try something radically different and uh, you may even get rid of a bunch of notes and um, uh, there is uh, when you're dealing with a bunch of notes um, I got the logical editor set up on a hotkey F7 and when I bring it in here there's a really cool ways to thin out notes um, you could um, put these you could copy these to another track and quickly set up if you go to the logical editor You'll see at the beginning here. There's one called delete every fifth note well um, I've made a custom version of that delete every second note, but the way it works really simply is uh, Cubase gives you a bunch of logical um, helpers and If you look uh, you and look at them all and see how they're built you can make your own right so, but I started with this one, uh, delete every fifth note. I said, well, I want to delete sometimes every second note or every third note. And you could quickly just change that by just uh, clicking on here and changing that to, um, I want to delete every second note. So now it's every second note. And instead of delete, if you look here, you can say, no, I want to select every second note. So you can either delete every second note, every fourth note, sixth note, every, you know, fifth note. 
or you can select every fourth, fifth, or whatever you change up in here. And then, you know, if you want to um, keep certain of uh, these ideas as a preset, just go to Save as a Preset up here and give it a name. And now just hit F7. Uh, so your workflow would be, you know, whenever you want to change notes that are repeating, and there's a lot of them, and you don't want to go in and hold down shift and go like this and say, oh, you know, that's going to take you forever. Then you're going to lasso the wrong ones. And so you just hit F7. Once you set up your hotkey, you um, go up here. You'll have your preset made to whatever you want. In this case, I got uh, every second note select. And then you hit, you have to hit apply. And then now every second note on the track will be selected. So before you do that, you may want to, uh, like I say, just take, grab all the notes that you want to work with and copy it, paste it to a blank MIDI track, and then do all your logical editing uh, where you can select uh, what you want and um, really work a lot quicker. You know, um, just as an example, um, say, say these notes here, but say you had a whole bunch because there's... Um, there's also a lot of great ideas where, you know, you can create um, um, different patterns and you can, you know, drag out a note, say one long note, and say you want to divide it up into, to start to make an arpeggio out of it. And, uh, but you want to, you don't want to use your cut tool and cut, 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 cut. That's, uh, wouldn't be fun. So if you uh, hold your Alt key while you're over that note, it will cut it up for you according to the grid and how the different grid settings that you have. So now you have all these notes to start with, but you still, then the second problem is, is that, okay, now I got to select by hand every second one. And if you're doing this with lots of uh, repetitions, it, it can be, you know, a headache to go and do that every time. Because what you want to do is you want to select every second one, so you may want to move them up like that to give you a rhythmic pattern. So you'll find that you often want ways to select patterns of notes and delete notes. And so in this way, I would just you know take all these notes, copy it to a second track, and then hit the logical editor, and it would whatever you have it set up to select or delete uh, would happen. So. Um, yeah, I thought I'd just mention the logical editor and how it makes sense and logic to uh, be used for patterns since we have so many patterns here. So let's go on to the next one, which we have some more patterns, but of course you want to change that up too. So that's the idea with that. This one's a little more interesting. Now, something like this, I would really, uh, I would listen to it and I, I would save a copy of it. And I would say, okay, this one, I'm really gonna experiment with the experimental copy. And I might go with the first two uh, measures of what they have, and then really start to change it up with changing the rhythm and changing some of the notes, but always staying within, you know, the, uh, scale of what I'm working with here and then um, come up with something totally different add some longer notes and, and whatnot in there there's another idea So this idea also could be worked with and you could get a lot of uh, different flows from this. You could make a chorus and then a verse out of it. And then for the bridge, you, again, you could just say, okay, I want a lot more rhythm and action in my bridge. I might select these notes and um, again, just go and hold down Alt and you know have it all cut up really quickly and to bring in some rhythm. So there are definite ways where you can work really quick to add rhythm, take away rhythm. So I wanted to mention that in this video. 
and um, there's also ways that you can take the flow of uh, your music with um, a uh, tempo track and that's something I haven't really talked about yet but it's uh, if we look at it here every track or every song you can have a tempo track and instead of just setting the tempo down here as we've before right now it's at 80 beats per minute on this uh, day for this idea but with that tempo track um, you really can take take that uh, that tempo here that number and just like any kind of other data you can um, write in how you want it to uh, work with the song so you have to uh, set it up to write but once you do you can write in the points and uh, make it uh, ramp up so you can ramp up the tempo where your crescendo of your notes are building up so your tempo will go from 80 to maybe 85 you don't want to do dramatic changes usually you don't want to go from like 80 to 110 or something but to help the flow of your music um, you can write in tempo changes over time and ramp them up just like you would uh, write in uh, velocity changes um, oops sorry for that but so you you write in changes of tempo but you usually do it when you want the wherever the music is getting a lot of uh, rhythm and starting to really move so you will that number would change from maybe 80 to 85 as it ramps up into the crescendo of your music and then maybe we'll go down again back to 80 uh, as it kind of so not only can you make rhythm and movement in your notes and with velocity you can also help that with um, adding uh, controller data track of your tempo so that's another thing we will look at and talk about in the future so that's today's look at this idea and uh, what we did today was we started with an idea on a piano or a keyboard and um, we were searching for chords so when we found some chords that we liked then we uh, saved those recorded them into Cubase and then was able to edit the chord set and fine-tune it exactly how we wanted using these tools and then uh, bringing it into Cubase um, and then dragging in all kinds of musical blocks of ideas editing them and uh, giving us even more uh, fine-tuned ideas for our latest ideas so I hope you enjoyed this uh, today's little video have a great day wherever you are and we'll see you on the next one